time you hear about cholesterol, the next word that follows that is bad. Is cholesterol really bad for you? Stay with me in this video and your lady Salome will go over functions of cholesterol and ways of managing your cholesterol. Stay tuned. Hello lovely people, welcome to Ezra Wellness where you learn proving ways to healthy living. This is your lady Salome Adamako. I'm a nurse by profession. If you want to learn proving ways to healthy living, subscribe to my channel and what you do, Click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my educative videos. Today, I'm talking about cholesterol. Yes, what is cholesterol in the first place? Cholesterol is a waxy, white, yellowish fat that is found in the body. And cholesterol is very crucial for cell membrane building block. Cholesterol, according to an article found on the University of Harvard School of Medicine website, the cholesterol that the body needs, 20% we get from food. The rest of the 80%, the body makes it. Yes, the body makes cholesterol. Are you surprised? Yes, I was when I read it. So the body makes cholesterol about 80% and we eat almost only 20%. So what about the days that you don't eat? The body makes the whole 100% of the cholesterol that it needs. So why is cholesterol so important to the body? Let's look at it. They have so many benefits for the body. And I already talked about one for the um, cell membrane structure. Other things that we need cholesterol for is to be able to produce hormones. Hormones like your cortisol, you need cholesterol. Hormones like the sex hormones, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen. We need these hormones to make us men and women and you need cholesterol to produce it. Cholesterol is also needed to make vitamin D. We always say that we get vitamin D from the sun, but when the sun shines on your skin, you need cholesterol to be able to make that vitamin D. We also need cholesterol for the bowel that we need to break down our fat, the liquid that is found in the gallbladder to help us to be able to uh, digest our fat and get the fat soluble vitamins. We need cholesterol to make that. And also cholesterol is very essential for brain function. Yes. These and many more are the reason why we need cholesterol. Cholesterol is carried in the body in four forms. But what I really want to talk about today is the most common one, the low density lipoprotein and the high density lipoprotein, because that is the one a lot of people know about, or the LDL and the HDL. And what are these cholesterols? You know, the Bible says, in Psalm 134 that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and that statement is so true one of them is this cholesterol when you think about it fat and water do not miss and our blood is mostly made of water so God in his own wisdom made this beautiful packages to carry the fat around in the body so the LDL is like a vehicle that carries cholesterol to the tissues. The, um, the cholesterol, most of it is made in the liver. So when the liver is done making the cholesterol and it needs to go to the tissues, what it does is that there is this structure, it's called a lipoprotein. And that is why we have low density lipoprotein. That is what the LDS stands for. And this beautiful structure carries the cholesterol inside it to the cells. And then the high density lipoprotein also carries the cholesterol that is done using in the cells and everything from the blood vessels and the tissues back to the liver to be excreted. And these are the jobs of these cholesterol carriers. That is why they refer to them as the low one is bad because it's carrying it to the tissues and the HDL is good because it's carrying it back from the um, tissues to the liver to be excreted. And then another thing is that the low density lipoprotein is also the, um, the cholesterol that is found in blood vessels with people that have had stroke. And because of that, this cholesterol has been linked to heart issues. But right now, Carrot Research is saying that it's more complicated than they thought that cholesterol causes heart disease. But now what they are looking into there is more to this cholesterol than they knew before. So right now, as we speak, 
the U.S. dietary guidelines, the current one, they drop the amount of cholesterol that we should eat in our food. The dietary guideline in 2010 had said we should eat about 300 milligrams of cholesterol a day. But the current one that they have, they don't have the amount in there anymore. So if you eat foods like egg and foods like shrimp in moderation, in addition to an overall healthy diet, that should be fine for you. So they're digging more into the cholesterol and I know more studies will come up. So what are some of the factors that affect our cholesterol? You need cholesterol to build your stress home. Because of that, when you're stressed out, it affects your cholesterol level. Also, systemic inflammation. Studies have shown that it do affect your cholesterol. You say, what is systemic inflammation? If you don't know about it, check out my video, what is in your food? And you know all about that. And also, hereditary. There are some few people out there that because of the way their body is made, they make more cholesterol. And these people, cholesterol could be a problem. And if you have other pre-existing conditions like um, diabetes, high blood pressure, those things could also contribute to high cholesterol in your blood. But if you are someone who do not have any of these conditions, but you go to your doctor and the doctor is telling you that your cholesterol is high, you want to use other ways to manage it instead of going on medications. What are some of the ways that we use to manage your cholesterol? And this is where Ezra Wellness come in. We've been campaigning and educating that we eat healthy so that we'll be able to keep these things under control. So one of the things that you would do is you have to cut down sugar and carbs from your food. Yes, studies have shown that sugar, when you eat it in large quantities and it goes in the body, it turns on the cholesterol making machine in your liver. So you want to cut down back on that. And you know that um, carbohydrates, when you eat so much of it, at the end of the day, it turns into sugar. And I have videos on all of these. You check my channel, you will see most of them. Also, stress management. I told you already, stress will make your cholesterol go higher. So you want to manage your stress. And if you do, it would also help to bring your cholesterol under control. And then another thing that I want to say is that exercise. Exercise, exercise is good to help to bring your HDL, which we term the good cholesterol up, and will bring the other cholesterols and your triglycerides down. The bottom line is, people who are worried that they cannot eat cholesterol-containing foods, now the guidelines, you could eat your shrimp, your egg, in moderation, in addition to an overall healthy diet. If you have high cholesterol, and you don't have any other conditions that will keep, put you at risk for cardiac issues, then the advice is you try to manage it with diet, with stress management, with exercise. And then if you have other pre-existing conditions that will put you at risk for heart disease, then you want to talk to your doctor about taking some medication. But one thing that you have to know that the cholesterol lowering medications is going to disrupt all these other functions that you need the cholesterol for. So if you're a woman of age, you're already going into menopause, you know your estrogen is going to go down as it is. You don't want to take cholesterol medications to bring it any lower. So you want to try and use diet to manage it. You say to yourself, Salome, where do I start? If you are not sure where to start, well, Check out my video, how to kickstart your immune system. And after that, you'll see the video next to that. It tells you exactly how to start to go on a healthy way of eating. And when you do, you'll be able to manage your cholesterol. What I want to say is that cholesterol have vital functions in the body. So before you go start taking medication to lower this very important substance in the body, make sure you use diet first to manage it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Are you new to this channel? Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my educative videos. Remember, this is Ezra Wellness, where you learn proving ways to healthy living. Thank you.